G'day guys, welcome back to the Gear Cave. Today we will be switching out some stuff in this guitar, so we'll be... So he's kind of jumped ahead of what we've got here. What we have here oh, is a yeah. 70th anniversary. I'm going to kill the amps first, back in a sec. So today we have a 70th anniversary and a Squire a Stratocaster. So this guitar sounds very nice and we're going to try and replicate it in this guitar. It does a pretty good job but we're going to try and make it sound exactly the same because when dad goes to gigs with his band he's not really going to want that lifted, broken and yada yada yada. Yeah. So bought this uh, beautiful instrument at the beginning of the year. Um, it's the first Strat that I've actually Liked. really liked and bonded with. This is excellent, this guitar. I, I can't say enough about it. It's just the way, it, yeah. it's weight, it's feel, it's sound is amazing. So I sold my 50th anniversary, which I never bonded with. Um, and I bought this beautiful instrument from Guitar Crazy in Sydney. I bought it online. I love the top on it. It's very active. It's not just your typical guitar lineal Guitar Crazy. Oh, that was an old store, like 12 or 30 years ago, Guitar it, Crazy. Isn't it called Sunburst Music? Sunburst <laughs> Music. And I bought bought it off Sunburst Music in Sydney in uh, January. Yeah, it was January. And um, to my horror, they've closed down now. So Sunburst Music is gone. Um, I'm shocked and horrified because wow. when I was a Sydney person, I, that was one of the guitar stores I would go to and um, one of the more professional boutique, um, longest, long-standing store in Sydney and now another one has fallen to the wayside. So a bit devoted about that, but wow. um, I have this from Sunburst Music. And we also have a shirt over there, but yeah. it, it's too yellow. It's too yellow and it's too small <laughs> for me. Well, it's big for me, but... Yeah, yeah, it's not the nicest looking thing. So anyway, in our usual style, I have bought a classic vibe Squire. Yet again. And I want to, it's my last one ever, I promise. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And so was the Jazzmaster. So that was my last Squire last, last time. But, and so was the Jaguar. That was also his last Squire. Yeah, that was my last Squire too. So no more Squires, clearly. Mm, yeah, there's not a lot of confidence there, but um, I do buy nice guitar, or well, yeah, squires are nice, but I do buy top shelf guitars as well, as you can see here. So the plan is, is to bring this classic vibe up to this level. And I've got to tell you, in Australian dollars, which is what we like to call the Pacific peso, because it's not worth bugger all, um, in Australia, and Americans are going to laugh, yes, we pay 3,000 odd dollars for this guitar. Yes, $3,000. Um, in the States, I think they're maybe 18, 1900 bucks, maybe two grand. <laughs> Anyhow, um, and Americans are going to laugh again. I paid $500 for the Classic Vibe secondhand, but we are dealing in Pacific Peso, which is about on par with a Canadian dollar. So for you international people, that'll give you some relevance about the financial value. Shall we swap? Yes. Thank you. So, oh, this is noticeably Jeez, lighter. This is, this is heavier. Yeah, it feels heavy, doesn't it? Um, the, the classic vibe is substantially lighter. Oh, substantially. Probably, I think I weighed it maybe three, four hundred grams. Um, the reason why I did grab this, I was eyeballing it on Marketplace for about three or four weeks. Because you made an oath. You'll only buy a Squire if it's got... If it's a Chinese made. No, well, that was after this. So I'd already gotten to, I'll only buy um, Chinese, pre-2017 Chinese made um, classic vibes. And you're going, oh, why? The Indo ones are just as good. The Indo ones are great, but the Indo ones do not have rosewood fretboard. Not that it matters. Um, and they don't have the ash bodies. Not that it matters. And just for all the keyboard warriors out there, it doesn't matter what it's made of if it doesn't matter to you. However, if I'm going to buy a Stratocaster, I do kind of want it made out of the traditional timbers. So pre-2017, I'm more accurate to the American equivalent. Mm. That's the only reason why. And this particular guitar has a, has a beautiful, beautiful flamey neck. Everything, um, it's just amazing. Is it's it, tiger striped. It's just gorgeous. Is it flame maple? Flame maple neck. Mm. So it's essentially the same specs as this guy, except that's got a maple veneer. And this one has a satin neck, 
Not yeah, that's got a set neck, but this will have a set neck too. Eventually. So, what are we doing to this? Obviously, a uh, fender bridge with a full weight um, lump of steel behind it. The, so, there is a weight in there. On the squires, it's like kind of half routed out. It's not the proper weight. So, if you believe all the tone masters out there, the larger block will add better tone, sustain, all that sort of business. I've got some beautiful custom made humbuckers. They're, oh geez, what did John Mayer have in his black one? Big mean? dippers. So I've got some custom made um, big dipper pickups to put into it. Um, some high quality pots, pots oak switch. Um, I prefer that switch though. Well, we, I don't even know what's in this one. I haven't pulled this one apart, but I would expect it'll have mini pots, the circuit board clear switch, and this is a three ply pickguard, which I've actually bought a nice four ply. Um, so it's getting all the US upgrades you can imagine. Absolutely phenomenal neck on this. It's, it, and it doesn't feel dissimilar in your hand compared to the $3,000 Fender. Um, so for 500 bucks, without modifying it, it's pretty close. Like, I don't mind playing this guitar tonally. It does sort of fall away tonally when you're digging in and, you know, having a bit of fun. And then you jump over to that, yeah, wow, the glorious tones. Um, there is a significant difference in sound. People do talk well about the Squire pickups and for their price range, absolutely, they're fantastic. But for me and jamming with my band, they've got to go, they don't have that tone. And I want tone. Um, what else? Mm, well, I guess we just go to the workbench now. We'll go to the workbench. I'll show you the bits and pieces we've bought for it. And um, we'll get to ripping this apart, sanding it. Body-wise, I'm not going to go full crazy inlays like I have with previous uh, videos. We're just going to rough it up a bit. I'm still thinking about putting a nice little uh, cedar smiley in there. I don't know if I'll go there or not. I did a bit of playing around this morning. I liked it, but... No. Didn't love it. So I think I might just leave it like this. I'll satin up the body, rub, maybe just give it a very slight relic. Um, the paint job on this, even though it looks wonderful here and it has a nice gloss and there's no dings or anything like that. To me, if you look at this in, in, a, in a brighter light, say daylight, for instance, um, the finish looks like it's been sprayed on a really humid day. And if you spray clear coats, on a really humid day, they bloom. In other words, they go a little bit opaque, a bit white. Um, and when the light does hit this, it does look a bit white and cloudy and mm, mottly. Yeah. Like, that's not a good finish. So um, to rub half of this off and give it a bit of a road-worn look, it's probably helping the guitar, <laughs> if anything. Um, but I'm not gonna go full crazy. It's just gonna look a bit road-worn. Gonna satin up the neck, put all the good US stuff in it and see how close it gets to that beautiful guitar. So the bits and pieces we're going to put on this, we'll start with the easiest. Really pretty four ply pick guard in the dark tortoise shell and back cover as well, new screws. Uh, we're going with some locking tuners from Geico. They come in a little packet like that. So we're going to take the, or the original Squire ones off and these will be much nicer and also locking, which brings it up to par with my American strap. There the strings we'll be putting on. Now our block is indeed a uh, genuine Fender one. Um, you can see the quality upgrade, especially in the saddles. The way the Squire ones are bent are very irregular and just about not very nice. And of course the full solid block, which I'll show you what's in the Squire once I pull that out. I did also buy the brass block. From what I hear, it makes no difference whether it's the brass one or not, you can't sonically hear it. You'd probably be able to see it on oscilloscope maybe, but you know, human ear, doesn't really matter. But it's a significant upgrade to what's in it. I was going to use these guys, but they were too white. They're too weird. The pickup covers are weird. The control knobs are the right color, but because there's nothing consistent there and I'm not really happy with the colors, I'm actually going to reuse the Squire, the Squire plastics, the knob controls and the pickup covers. I'm gonna reuse those. 
Ah, the pickups. Okay, so these are the pickups I'm going to use. Joshi will put a link to the description. That's the guys I've bought the pickups off. So these are their big dippers. Um, some nice custom. So how much were these, you ask? Uh, in Australian dollars delivered, they're about 250 bucks. Wow. So get rid of those bright white. And that's a nice pickup. Very pretty. Big dippers, apparently. All right. So that will get the original covers put back on them. Not using your branded CTS, but these are decent quality pots. Brass leaves, brush, everything. Um, so they are a decent quality pot. Uh, what else have we got? Proper switch. Just some wiring, traditional vintage. And that's about it, really. So not a massive, massive um, ordeal. It's just um, a bit of component swapping out. But I do have to pull the neck off because I'm going to sand that. Um, the, the weight on this, I have pulled the strings off, but I did weigh the strings. They're about 18 grams. So this guitar was 3.2 kilo on the dot with the strings on it. So it's a, it's a really nice weight guitar. I think it's going to wind up around about the three and a half by the time I put all the quality components in it. But still a fairly light guitar at three and a half kilo. Cool, all right. I'll get to ripping it apart. We'll just jump through this because how many people rip guitars apart on YouTube and it's boring as hell. Oh, mini pots, circuit board, decent pickups, but they're going to get booted. Um, yeah, so all of that's going. I'm, the only pits I'm going to use here, are, like I said, are the plastics. That will look lovely. So yeah, what I expected to be under there. Typical run-on-the-mill switch, it's no worries. It's not scratchy, so I'll just reuse that. So, I've just lifted the bridge. Are you shorting down on here? Yes, I am. Okay. So, I've just lifted the old bridge out. And you will look at them and go, oh, they're very, very similar. And they are. Except the quality of these saddles are very different. These are kind of irregular. The Squire ones are irregularly bent. And this Fender ones are very consistent. Nice Fender logo on the saddles. And the biggest part of the difference here is going to be those blocks. Look at the difference in that. So you could have bought it. I could have just bought a, well, the brass block and reused this and just put that on there. But I really wanted to upgrade it to a fender. If it's got any chance of, you know, competing with the American, um, straight over there it's got to have some decent components and you can see you can see how far that's bent over and that one's not that would is yeah most of them are fairly consistent that one's not barely bent over at all it's just yeah a bit inconsistent in quality on the old squire bridge the beveling on this one is much nicer also cool will it fit in without any issues i believe so now, one thing I w when I was going down my brass component rabbit hole, I was going to spend another fifty dollars and replace that. There was lots of tone gurus on the internet saying, "Oh, that makes a lot of difference." I can't imagine that it will. You know, they say upgrade the springs as well because it'll transfer tone through this into screws into the wood. I think it's a bit of one of those guitar magic things that in reality probably doesn't make a huge difference, but hey, if you believe in that sort of thing, go right for it. Um, but yeah, I decided not to upgrade that. I just didn't think the extra $50 was gonna be well spent. Cool, so, all right, what have I got to do now? Just pull the neck off and go to town on it. All right, so whoever set this up last time used the uh, typical Fender 
precision neck adjustment. <laughs> Piece of cardboard. <laughs> Yeah, look, this, this is really common with fenders. Like, they are just a bolted on neck or screwed on neck. And if you want to tilt that neck angle down, you just stick a bit of cardboard under the heel. But we will be reusing that. because a ninja. It, yeah, what, is, what was the card? Computer virus. So it was a computer tech card. Perfect for shimming out the neck. <laughs> oh, if we can. Is that showing up in camera, the flamey, Josh? Yeah, there we go. That's showing up quite a bit. Yeah, it's right through, right through the whole thing, even on the headstock here. And another thing with the Chinese squires, a big telltale, if you're looking on the internet and if you don't know they're Chinese squires, the Chinese squires have that very faint etched in there with the Indo ones much deeper pressing on them. And the Indonesian squire logo is not as reflective gold as the Chinese ones. That's really almost iridescent. Um, really stands out and there's nothing to be ashamed of or you people going oh it doesn't say Fender man I'm proud that it says Squire on there because if you've got a guitar that is kicking ass against all the US stuff and sounds just as good plays just as good but you spend under a thousand dollars as opposed to three thousand dollars which is the better guitar yeah that yeah. one <laughs> anyway Let's move on. So I'm going to sand the bejesus out of that. I've got to sand this with probably 800 and then a 1200 to make that nice and satin. I'll mark that off so I keep the head stock nice and gloss. All right, I guess what we really got to do here is sand. <laughs> got to be interesting? Nope. All right, so just out of curiosity, how much weight am I going to put on the guitar just with the bridge exchange? So the old bridge, the Squire bridge, Weighs 220 grams. Oh, like on the dot too. On the dot. And the new one. 340. Uh, 40 you do. So it's 120 grams heavier. So already the guitar is going to weigh. All right, Dad, what are you doing there? Well, <clears throat> I've just ran orbital, orbital sander over it with a bit of 220 on it. Yep. 240 it actually was and then I've gone over with the wet and dry I've removed a little, I wouldn't say a lot I've burned through two little spots that one's a little bit accidental so it's really really thick everywhere except for there which is burned through a little bit which is fine I, I did want to sort of have a little bit of a worn look to it mm -hmm. um, that's to simulate your arbor rubbing like I said only lightly worn there's no dings and scratches and all that sort of rubbish going on. Um, I like it. It feels nice and smooth. I, I will give this a bit of a buff. Um, but I'm going to give it a little bit more wet dry. It's 800. And that'll buff up really nicely. All right. And I'll just really what I want to do is take enough of this hard plastic off. To make it feel satin? Well, not satin, but not like a big lump of plastic. Because the, the way they put this urethane on... They just really flow it on. It's thick. It's thick, hard plastic. Um, and I actually want the guitar to wear. If I play this guitar enough, I want that to spread yeah. to where I wear. You know, all of my acoustics have all of my little polished spots and where my arms sit on them. And yeah. I do play acoustic a lot more. But, yeah, I kind of want these to do the same thing. And if they're covered in auto, you know, car grade, auto grade polyurethane, <laughs> it's never going to wear through. But yeah, it's all, I don't know, it's all about fun. Just having fun. I reckon, yeah. And making them <coughs> completely unique. It's yeah. That colour I was telling you guys about before, um, if I stop wetting the guitar, what it actually looks like, and when I brought it out here in the sun, or well, well, the light, it's no sun today, it's a bit overcast, um, you really could see since I've sanded this, you see how it goes a bit grey and a bit matte? Once I polish that, it'll go clear again. But this clear coat, once, once you polish it up, it looks like that through the clear. This is why I didn't really mind sanding this off. Because even when this is glossy and it looks really nice, when the light is on it, the clear looks like that. Because they sprayed it with a lot of humidity, like probably a rainy day. Yeah. And they haven't had the heat up. So the humidity gets trapped in the clear coat and makes it go cloudy.
All right, so we finished the buffing, the sanding and the buffing. I'm fairly happy with what it came out with. Um, actually, cutting the clear back, I've removed quite a bit of the blooming that was in the clear coat. Some of it's still there, but you know, it's a road worn now. <laughs> it's suitable. Um, so it's come up really, really nicely. Just a little bit of wear there where my arm's going to be and um, a little, little bit pop through. It seemed to be really thin there when I was sanding it. Everywhere else is really thick, like a sanding, sanding, sanding. Just touch that area and it kind of rubbed away pretty quickly, so that's okay. I think it adds a little bit of extra character. All right, what else have we done? And what else I have done in, in between filming? I've sanded this neck back with a, about a thousand grit, just um, right up to the headstock. As you can see, it's still glossy there. These are the locking tuners I have installed now. They uh, didn't quite fit, they were just a little bit long. So each one I had to take about half a mil um, off each edge and then they fit perfectly. So, and they feel really nice. Each one of these is four grams heavier than one of the standard ones. So there is a little bit of extra weight there where we got eight, 16, uh, 22. 16, no, 20. So you've got about 20 grams extra weight on the headstock, which is not a great, not a lot. Um, I've also swapped this out previously for a round pin, or not that, just that ugly little bent metal that they use as a string tree. So that's the next ready. I've uh, installed the bridge to the body. I'm about to finish off the wiring. Uh, here's a piece that everybody loves and enjoys, the plastic peel. There you go, all those people that love the plastic peel. Now I'm gonna to have to loosen those screws off, get the rest of it off. Oh, actually, I think there's another layer there. We've had this before, haven't we, Josh? Yeah. Oh. You get the sound effects too. Oh, gee whiz. Now I'm gonna to have to loosen off every nut and bolt <laughs> and get the remainder off. What a pain in the butt. That's pretty though, isn't it? Yeah. All right. And we're going to use the existing connector, put that back on and then wiring and put it all back together. And that will be all of it. Okay. All righty. So how does it sound? Well, let's go acoustically. It's actually a lot louder than what it was. It's significantly louder, actually. Um, acoustically, it's um, yeah, louder, and I think it does have a bit more tone about it, to be honest, but that could to do with my setup as well. Yeah. Um, but keeping in mind, we do have a heavier block behind the bridge. <laughs> the guitar weighs a little bit more. I guess that may affect the tone. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, acoustically, it's significantly louder. It's louder than this guitar now. Um, I'll plug in and give you a quick... Demo. Yeah, I'll just plug in right now. Give me a sec. Alrighty, um, so <clears throat> the plugged in sound. It definitely has... That was special. All right, so the, the two sounds I typically use in the Strat is of course um, second from the top and second from the bottom, which I think is two and four, is it? So one, two, it's three, these four, two. five, yeah. So positions two and four are typically what I go to um, when using the Strat. What I have noticed is we do have a lot more substantial bottom end with these pickups, um, but the, it's still not the same as this guitar um, where the Fender still has a bolder, fatter sound, if you will. Yeah. It's really hard to describe sounds, right? It's like deeper in tone. Yeah, it still is a bit deeper in tone. Maybe some people might even say slightly muddy but it's not that's it's i just not. love everything about that sound this one has improved the bottom end with these um, big dipper pickups uh, the bottom is improved the mid tones 
aren't thick at all and the top is quite quite bright. What would you describe it as? It's a bit more spanky, if you will. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's brighter. It's bright. It's, brighter. it's it's got a uh, more bright top end and but a really bold bottom end. So I'm happy with the results. Does it compare to that? They're two different guitars, which wow was was pretty obvious from the start. Um, however, acoustically this is brighter and snappier, and plugged in it's it's consistent. It's brighter and snappier. Uh, people are going to ask me, what do the uh, pickups read out at? The, the, um, the neck is 5.7 on resistance. The bridge, no, sorry, the middle section was 5.7 as well. And the bridge was 6. They're supposed to balance out at 6. On the American, it's um, 6, 6.2 or so. And the and then the uh, bridge position is about 6.2, 6.5, whatever it was. So... If you were to take away the points, they're both guitars, essentially 666, and same with that one. Um, so a little bit of ohms resistance and variation there, but I wouldn't imagine that'd be significant to the tone. However, I'm not an expert. I'm just some guy that pulls guitars apart and plays with them and ruins them <laughs> or improves them. I wouldn't say ruins them. Well, the classic vibes I like to have a bit of a go at, don't I? Leave the US day, USA stuff alone. But yeah, look, I'm really, really happy with how it's come out. I do like the little bit of uh, where I put there. You know, I did have a look where I play and I put exactly where my elbow will go. So any future wear will be exaggerated by me playing it and throwing it around a pub. <laughs> <laughs> I All like right. it. It's good. Anyway, guys, so that's another one for the... All right, so there we go, guys. Um, that's the Strat. A little bit of road worn on there. A little bit of a vintage feel in the hand now. It's not that, that super polished, plasticky feel. The flame neck, I've, it has mellowed out because I've taken the gloss off that section of the neck, but it's still very flamey. Mm. I wish you could see how flamey it really is. It's... Um, just moves, it's mes oh, oh wow, look at that, it just popped in. Yeah, I know. As, as, it's, as you can't see. <laughs> um, yeah, happy with the guitar, it's worked out really well. Now you're all gonna say, was it worth the upgrade? So I've probably, how much am I into this guitar now? I am um, bought it for 500, bought the pickups at 250, I spent money on plastics I didn't wind up using, bits and pieces here and there, say another 50 bucks, so all in all, I guess I'm into this guitar about $850. Which is about the price of brand new. Well, yeah, if you bought a classic vibe in Australia, I think they're about... 900 Well, Squires, yeah, they're about 900 in Australia right now. But that's their retail asking price. Yeah. Realistically, in Australia, it's kind of like going to a jewellery store, right? They've got these retail prices and then the real prices. So the tag price in Australia typically wipe about 30% off. So if a Squires hanging in the in the store for $900, good chance you could pick it up $650, $700. So really, uh, this is a $700 guitar, $650, $700 guitar retail price. I'm into it about $850. So I'm pretty happy with that because it, it does rival a USA made guitar. Um, now, because yeah, it does compete with this one. It yeah. does compete, especially now. It's a different guitar, of course. It's got slightly different tones. However, Feel, weight, neck. I, I'm not going to say I prefer the USA over the guitar's feel. Not at all. Actually, this one's a bit lighter. The neck is marginally thinner. I actually prefer the feel of this one. Where Ooh. I do, when I go from here to the USA one, I do feel the weight and the chunky neck. Well, the slightly chunky neck. It's still a slim neck. But five minutes later, I'm totally into that guitar. Um, it's just like when you swap from one guitar to another anyway, you go, oh, there's a slight difference. Five minutes later, you're singing along. So, yeah. Yeah. No, very happy. Very, very happy. This is a, definitely a guitar I'll be using um, out at the pub. Yeah. Cool. All right. Remember, like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Oh, yada, yada, yada. Um, 
Our next video might be a comparison video. No, no, next video we're going to have Joshy's sister come in, Leah, and show everybody her new, um, what base did she get? Cougar. Jaguar. Jaguar base. So little Leah, she's picked up base and she's learning that and... Uh, I thought I was going to show my new Les Paul. Oh, well, there's lots of guitars you can see. Um, but yeah, Leah wants to come into the Gear Cave fold, so we want to bring her in on the next one. <clears throat> and then the video after that, we're going to possibly do... I'm looking over the wall over there where the guitars are hanging. And we've got another surprise, surprise, classic vibe to do some things to. Yeah. And that's the Jazz Master. So I actually want to go to town on that a bit with the, uh, putting some inlays and stuff into the body and... Uh, yeah, but then there's also a couple of other squires over there. There's two more squires after that. So I guess, as I'm not buying any more squires, never. Um, there's <laughs> really only three more squire videos to go. That'll be the Jazzmaster, the Coo, the Jaguar, and the 70s. Well, like and subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and we'll see you in the next one. Yep. Okay, bye. Thanks, guys.